Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm really excited to go over my first makeup basket for 2019. This is my everyday makeup basket for January. I do have a playlist with makeup baskets from every month of 2018, so if you would like to check that out, I'll throw that up in the cards right over there. And if you have it and you'd like to, I really hope you will consider subscribing to this channel. I post videos every single Monday through Friday, including monthly makeup makeup basket updates as well as shopping my stash and lots of pro blah 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 and lots of project pans. So if you're new to the channel, up here on the top is where I keep some other products along with some setting sprays right up there on the top. This is all mascara that is completely like done past its three month mark. I'm keeping all of them there because I'm planning on doing this big epic mascara video, but I only want to review mascaras that I have used for the entire three month life of mascara. So I'm keeping all of those right there. And then everything in this top drawer are my little samples that I pick out in my bite size review series. I try out samples and I try to work through all the small samples that I have. So if you would like to check out that series as well, I'll throw that up in the cards. Typically I would keep my next project pan right down here but my next project pan I'm actually keeping on the shelf over here so I just have my Z palette in here with some powders so let's go over that first. So this is the Z palette that I created in my Depot With Me Struggle Bus video. If you missed that, I'll link it up above. But I basically just have kind of like my go-to essentials for every day. I have my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder up here on the top right. I have a depotted uh, Smashbox Contour Palette, those three little round pans on the bottom. The small square right over here is a Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder. It's just a nice contour powder I got in a mini. This is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Dulce. This is a Becca Highlighter in the shade Champagne Dreams Flashes Bellini. And then this right over here is a Wet n Wild blush and this is in the shade apricot in the middle. I love having all of my go-to face powders in one palette. It just makes getting ready in the morning so much easier. All right, in the next drawer I have all of my like separate powders that I'm going to try to use during this month. The first product I have is a carryover. This is a highlighter from Jeffree Star. This is the highlighter in the shade Ice Cold Stark White. I really want to, like, I'm debating whether or not to depot this, but it's so huge. I don't know if it's better just to keep it in, in this compact, but I do want to get more use out of some of my single highlighters, and this is one that I want to reach for more often. Another highlighter, one that I actually just got that I can't wait to try out, this is from Morphe, and this is a mini of their high impact highlighter in the shade Spark. I got this as a gift, it was part of a birthday gift from a friend of mine, her name is Angela, and she was the one who collaborated with me on my Finish 6 by Solstice. She gave me this really cute little um, box full of just birthday goodies, and this was in there, and I actually was debating whether or not I wanted to try some of the minis from Morphe since I saw that they have minis. I'm a sucker for minis and I can't wait to try out this highlighter. I feel like three highlighters might be a little excessive, but this has quickly become one of my holy grails over 2018. This is the Becca highlighter in the shade Royal Glow and it's just the most beautiful subtle highlight that you can build up to blinding and I've actually almost worn away the top of the crown right there and I feel like I might hit pan on this so I really do just want to keep this within reach on my vanity because I'm thinking about including this in my next project pan. For loose powder, I really want to finish up my Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. This is in this, the shade Yellow. This is one of my favorite setting powders, and it's like almost gone. Like, there's barely anything left, so I really just want to keep it in here to finish it up, and then once this is gone, I'll replace it with another loose powder in my collection. I think I'm going to go next with the Too Faced Loose Powder. They're like peach one after this one's done. Last but not least in this drawer, I have a powder from Pixie. This is just a translucent setting powder. I've been wanting to try out more from Pixie, and this is one of the first products that I picked up. It's an okay powder. It's definitely um, translucent, like I don't see a white cast on me or anything, but I feel like I have to like dig in and use a lot of product just to set my foundation when I use other powders I don't have to like use as much powder um, but I am testing it out giving it a thorough try and eventually 
I want to get to a point where I can do a brand review on Pixi, but I'm just beginning because I've only tried out like three or four products so far. Next we have our foundation drawer. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, but of course I have my Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation in the shade 030 Sand Beige. I love this foundation. I love mixing this foundation. I love this foundation on its own. The only thing that's a little bit difficult for me right now is that I'm at my palest that I'll ever be, and so this is just a little bit too dark for me right now. So I do have to lighten it or mix it into something, but still one of my absolute favorite foundations of all time. Next, I have a foundation that's new to my collection that I've been trying out. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Luminous Makeup. This is, what shade are you in? You are in, this is in the shade Ivory L2, which I believe is just the closest that I can get. It's just a little bit off for me. I don't think the undertones are great, but I've tested this foundation out on its own and on its own, I don't really like it. It tends to break down on me. It doesn't last a full day. But by mixing this, I actually really like this. So I've been mixing this with the Catrice foundation and I love the way they look together. They look amazing. So this one is lighter than the Catrice. So I feel like it does lighten the Catrice up enough to where I can use it. And I love the way that they work together. So this isn't a foundation I would wear on my own anymore, but it is one that I'm enjoying mixing and experimenting with. This is another foundation that I'm currently testing out. This is the Makeup Revolution Stick Foundation, and I have the shade F6. It's actually a pretty good shade match for me on its own. I've been testing this out, and it's been a bit confusing, but also a bit exciting. So I am planning to do a whole video on this, so I won't give away too much right now. But uh, keep your eyes out for that video, because I think I may have finally found... A stick foundation that actually works on my skin, which if, if you've been following my channel for a while, you've seen me struggle with many stick foundations. The next foundation that I'm pulling back out for this month is from NARS, and this is the NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation, and I have the shade Punjab. This is, again, a little bit dark for me right now, but... By lightening it, I can use it or mix in with other foundations, and I forgot how much I actually liked this foundation. It sits really nicely on my skin, it does last a full day. I did do a whole video on this, it's oh, it's a few months old now, almost a year I believe, um, but I'll throw that up in the cards if you do want to check out my full video on this. But I did want to pull this back out and get some more use out of it. It is more than halfway gone at this point, like I believe the bottle's down to here. So we'll see, maybe I'll throw this in a pan or a project. Um, but we'll see how much I use it this month. Last but certainly not least, I have the Too Faced Do You Full Coverage Fresh Glow Foundation in the shade Porcelain. Now, Porcelain is really light. It's one of the lightest foundation shades that I own, but this oxidizes like hell. So if you are interested in this foundation, make sure you go up at least two shades because it will oxidize at least two shades. But other than that, I actually really, really like this foundation. It does have a really strong scent of watermelon. If you're not a fan of that, you might not want this. I also did a whole video on this and that was a while ago as well. So I did want to pull it back out and just play a little bit more with it because I, I missed it, honestly. <laughs> Next we have mascaras, and honestly there's nothing too exciting here. I have the Wet n Wild Mega Length, which is on its last legs. I think it has about a week left before it's three months or up. So I'm going to finish that one up. I have the Marc Jacobs Noir Mascara. It's a mini. I'm also going to be finishing that up this month. And then I have the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara, which I just opened a couple weeks ago, so this still does have a little bit of time left in it. So once the Marc Jacobs and the Wet n Wild are used up, I will throw in a couple other ones for the rest of the month. I pulled out quite a few black liners and some liquid liners, so I'm just going to go through those really quick that I'm going to be using this month. I have the Ulta Beauty Eyeliner Pencil in black, just the Ulta House brand. I have my Lancome Le Crayon Cold, this is a black eyeliner, oops, just a black eyeliner from Lancome. I have two liquid liners here, I have the NYX Epic Ink Liner, this one's actually in brown, and then I have the Milani Eye Tech Extreme in black as black. I believe the Milani is just about dried out, so I am trying to finish that one up, um, but I think the Epic Ink still has plenty of juice left in it. For brow gel, I'm currently trying out this Pixie Brow Tamer. Uh, once upon a time, this was clear. <laughs> um, but when you have dark brows and you use dark brow products and then you use a clear brow gel, this is, I guess, what it looks like on the inside. Honestly, I've never used 
a clear brow gel with a clear tube like this so i wonder if they all just look like that <laughs> it's kind of gross looking but i've actually been enjoying this brow gel so i am going to see if i can keep using it because i honestly don't know how i would run out like if i because i can't get down there to like scrape that bottom part so oh that looks weird <laughs> always have my handy dandy nyx glitter glue on hand and for my brows, I'm bringing back out a classic. This is the ABH Dip Brow, and I have the shade Granite. Let's see, the inside's probably a bit messy. Yeah, <laughs> but I do like it. Let's jump in next with concealers. For concealers, I'm not doing anything too different. I have the Kylie concealer in the shade Ivory, and then I have my Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Light Medium Honey that I am trying to use up. I'm also bringing back out my Benefit Boing Airbrush Concealer. This is just a salmon color corrector that I do like to use under my eyes. And last but not least, we have our primers. A face primer I'm bringing back out is this Dewy Primer from Wet n Wild. I did use this in my full face of Wet n Wild video, but it didn't really work well with the Wet n Wild foundation, so I am trying to test this out and try it with a bunch of different foundations that I have in my foundation drawer and see if it kind of feels the same way or if it just didn't really play well with the Wet n Wild foundation. One of my new favorite products of all time, yes of all time, is this e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I posted a video where I tested this head to head with the Tatcha primer, so if you want to see my thoughts and how they face off head to head, make sure you check out that video. But I am just about halfway done with this primer, I think. There is a lot of product in here. You actually get more product in here than you do in the Tatcha one. But it's been in my everyday makeup basket and drawer since I've gotten it. I also have this Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in the shade Eden. I'm just working through. These literally last like forever. So this is probably going to be in here for quite some time. Just like a paint pot. The MAC paint pots also last forever. Okay, so I lied a little bit. I'm also including this powder. So this is from Flower Beauty as well. This is the Magic Miracle Glow Satin Finishing Powder. So I this wasn't what I thought it was when I bought it. I thought it was going to be a face powder that I could use to like bake under my eyes. No, that's not this. This is definitely more along the lines of... Um, like an hourglass powder, like like a true finishing powder that you would use just to give yourself a little bit of glow. Um, so I have been keeping this just on the side of my vanity and testing it out. And so far, I like it. I think it's really cute. I just, I'm not a huge fan of like this bulky packaging and how messy it is and how I can't really fit it in like my basket. So it has to chill over there on the side. <laughs> So that is everything for my everyday makeup basket for January. Let me know down below what products you're excited to use in January and in 2019 as a whole. I know quite a few people are going on no buys this year. So let me know if you're on a no buy and how you're going to be shopping your stash. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye!